our third and final presenter is Jacqueline Farman. Jacqueline has 25 years experience testing creative and media effectiveness for leading New Zealand and global brands. And she's collaborated with Newsworks New Zealand to develop a neuroscience study here in New Zealand. Uh, the study findings show consumers engage differently by media and that the different media can, conform, uh, can perform complementary roles to drive business outcomes. Please welcome Jacqueline. Thanks, Alison. Good morning, everyone. Nice early start this morning in the Auckland rain. Um, I have the pleasure of taking you through the results of the neuroscience study that was conducted in New Zealand. Um, very similar in terms of the methodology to the UK study. Before I start, however, I just want to talk a little bit about the environment that we're all in. It's a real battleground out there, isn't it, from a communications perspective. We're all competing for a share of the consumer's mind and that tiny little shard of memory that's going to encode and remember what we're trying to break through and tell them. In this environment, creativity is becoming really, really important, more important than it ever has been because we've got to cut through, make people feel something and if at all possible, make them do something. The latest research into effectiveness is also increasingly talking about the role of media. Media has an incredibly important part to play in the environment that we operate in today. Different media do work in different ways, and if we understand what their strengths are, the ability to change the results, improve the effectiveness of our communications are immense. Our goal today is to challenge you to think again about news media and to understand <coughs> the specific way that news media works as part of your media strategy and the advantages and benefits it can deliver to you and your clients. As Denise talked about, we did a neuroscience study in New Zealand. We selected four brands, household names, brands that consumers were all familiar with. We selected the brands that were essentially in market at the time of our study across multiple media, and those media happened to be TV and newspapers. As with the UK, they came in to have their brain activity measured. So for me as a career researcher, this is really exciting. We're not doing a survey, we're not asking them to answer questions or critique a piece of creative, we are simply measuring how they are naturally responding to the stimulus that we're putting in front of them. They were a range of people, different ages, different genders. They saw TV first in some cases, newspaper first in others. Some of them were actively considering or buying a product in the categories that the brands were operating in, and some of them were not. <coughs> We've got a little bit of a video just to give you a, a little flavour for how the test operated in New, in New Zealand. Today we're going to be conducting some exciting research looking at how consumers respond to print media. Uh, we're going to be using uh, neuroscience to measure people's brain activity while they casually flick and read through the newspaper, looking at uh, how the brain responds to the news articles, to the advertising, particularly looking at cognitive functions such as memory encoding, engagement and emotional processing, and then comparing that with how people would watch a normal episode of TV. This is particularly important for advertisers in understanding how consumers respond to not only their advertising, but in the context of the print medium. Let's take a look at some of our hypotheses. When we started the process, we had some thoughts about what we were going to find. People are in different mindsets. Watching TV and reading a newspaper is a totally different activity. And actually, even from an observational perspective, when we saw people in the testing, they behaved quite differently across those two media. TV is a lean back experience. It's a relaxing experience. It's more immersive. <coughs> It was noticeable when people were reading TVs that their backs got straighter. They got more attentive. They were obviously more engaged in what they were doing. 
That mindset, we believe, impacts on how they process information and advertising. As Denise has already talked about, different media do different jobs, but those jobs are often complementary. More and more we're understanding that the more media you use for your campaigns, the more effective those campaigns will be. So understanding what role those media play is really important. And the third hypothesis was that because of its retail and activation nature, newspapers is a really powerful way of closing that deal, driving that sale, moving consideration up the purchase funnel. The first thing we're looking at now is just how people interacted with content. And you'll recognise some of these measures from Richard's talk. The memory, both left and right brain, so the more detail-oriented memory and the big picture memory, were both significantly higher when people were just browsing through a newspaper versus watching TV, as was visual attention. But look at that emotional intensity. There's a huge difference in the emotions that reading a newspaper evokes. And again, Richard talked about the importance of both positive and negative. Make it, if you want to make people feel something, then newspapers are an ideal place to be putting your advertising. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. The very fact of reading a news story, it could be sad, it could be happy, it could be thought-provoking, it could be shocking. The emotion that people are experiencing in that context is much higher than they experience in a, a lean-back entertainment situation like TV. But TV delivers on engagement. It is an entertainment media. When people are watching that, they are engaged, the content is personally relevant, they may be in front of their favourite TV show. For interest's sake, we put them in front of Modern Family, so but, you know, a really entertaining, enjoyable program. Whoops. I'll get used to this soon. The interesting thing is, I talked earlier about the fact that we had avid newspaper readers and those who were only occasional or non-readers. That level of emotion, attention, memory encoding was exactly the same, whether they were newspaper lovers or people who didn't read newspapers at all. So the very fact of sitting down and the greater attention required to read a newspaper makes a big difference to how people process information. So to date we've just talked about information, but we're really also interested in how advertising works. The numbers on the left are the results for content, the numbers on the right are the results when advertising comes in. So you can see with newspapers, we've activated a whole bunch of parts of the brain. We've got the memory starting to work, we've got the emotions moving. When we put advertising into that context, the results shoot up again. People are more interested in what you're saying. They're more likely to take those triggers and put them into memory. They are more likely to feel something strong as a result of seeing it. I think of it a little bit like giving your whole audience a barocca and then putting your advertising in front of it. We've primed them with content that gets their brains working at a higher level and then we've put our advertising messages in front of them. TV has the opposite effect. They are more engaged in the programming and when the advertising comes on, all those levels of engagement and intensity drop back. That's the break time in a TV viewing experience. It's the lean back time, make a cup of tea time. So the process of reading newspapers requires a lot more effort than passively watching TV. And what happens in the brain when that happens is it starts activating all those centres that are really important, as Richard pointed out, particularly memory, for driving future behaviour. This is a really active memory building occasion. In terms of our next hypothesis, news, television and newspapers do different but complementary jobs. They certainly, people certainly respond to them in different ways, but are newspapers better at tactical? 
detail-oriented stuff, and is TV better at driving emotion, big brand plays? We learned that the combination of media, even if a campaign is not integrated across different media, improves the effectiveness of your communication. So if you've got different ads running across different media, the power of your communication to be remembered and encoded is 10% higher. But if you integrate your campaign across media, you can multiply that by almost four times. Integrated campaigns supercharge the effectiveness and the memorability and the stickiness of your communications. In our case, across newspapers and TV, that's a four-fold four, four increase. Bit of a tongue twister there. And what happens in terms of the order effect? Am I pointing this? Right. When TV leads before newspaper advertising, so TV introduces an idea or a concept, newspaper comes in, as the second media, the level of detailed encoding increases significantly. All newspaper ads increase their level of, of that attention to detail and that remembrance of that detail by 26%. It's a little bit, I guess, like the idea of meeting somebody new, hearing a new piece of information. It's a lot easier to remember detail, to um, engage with that if you've already got some idea of who the person is or you may have met them before or seen them before. So when new newspapers come in second, they really drive home that detailed memory. When newspapers <coughs> go in first, however, they flip their job. They're a really agile channel because when our people saw newspapers first, they focused on the big picture, the, not the detail, they focused on taking in the story, the brand, the images, the visuals. So the t newspaper can do jumble duty, it could do either. It can deliver emotion and it can deliver detail. And in fact, some of the best campaigns that we see in print do a little bit of both. And I've put a few examples up here. I won't say too much about KFC, but I think the important thing there is that when you have something really important to say, when you need to get a message across, when your reputation's on the line, you put your information in the news. You put your information in the newspaper. Because that is the highest attention media. That is the media where people are going to read it and take it in. It is also great for retail. And that ad for Vodafone, I think, is a really good example of a hard out retail message with a whole lot of humour and personality added in. So newspapers can do both. They can also do real hard hitting stuff. It's not an entertainment medium, it's a thought provoking medium. You can easily put serious information into newspapers and grab people's attention, like this campaign for breastfeeding women. You know, there are still places in the world where they're given grief for breastfeeding in public. So this campaign went out there to say, hang on a minute, it's not okay for me to have to do this in private. They can deliver information, premium brands, um, non-premium brands, retail brands, all work well in print. So combining newspapers and TVs across an integrated campaign is a fabulous idea if you are interested in hardwiring your messages into somebody's brain. Getting them to stick so that the next time they're in front of the shelf or making a purchase decision, as Richard talked about, all of those memories that they connected together start coming back to them. We know that the ability to encode memory drives future behaviour and sales. But if you've got a limited budget, Think about newspapers doing both. They can deliver the big picture and they can deliver the detail. They can deliver emotion and they can deliver facts. 
The last hypothesis is what happens deeper down the purchase funnel. Are newspapers more effective at helping to drive those purchase decisions and prompt action? In the chart on the left, we have two results. In the red is the response of people who were in market or in category to buy or in an active consideration process across the categories of the ads that we tested. The red bar is the people who are actively in market looking to buy. The blue is those who are out of market. On the right hand side are the same results for TV. So same consumers exposed to advertising in those two environments, in market and out of market, what were the differences? <coughs> It's pretty obvious that newspapers knocked it out of the park, particularly for those who are actively thinking about purchasing or buying or in a consideration state in that particular category. The intensity of emotion and the ability to record, process and store that information was a lot higher. Even if they weren't in category, they were way more likely to register what you were saying than if they saw it on TV. So yes, newspapers are a great deal closer. They are perfect for getting to those people who are actively in market, in category, wanting to buy, and convincing them as to why yours is the route they should choose to go down. So we believe there are three key takeaways from this morning. Newspapers as a channel command attention. Because of the mindset that people are in when they're reading them, we're lighting up all parts of their brain, priming them to be ready to accept and take on the messages that we're putting in front of them. And they are particularly strong when it's advertising content. If you want to build a brand over the long term, build those iconic triggers into people's brains that Richard talked about, if you want to be distinctive and sticky, then a multi-channel approach that includes newspapers is key. <coughs> They're really agile. They're flexible. They can do both emotion really well, and they can do detail really well. In fact, they're one of the only media that can carry complex, detailed messages and engage to an engaged audience. But their real strength is in that detail. When newspapers follow TV, all of your detailed messaging gets encoded into people's brains. When you integrate your messaging across those two channels, you increase the effectiveness of that by four times. And when customers are further along the purchase channel, their brains light up even more. And those messages that are really important that need to get through are recorded and stored away. They will engage more fully with your humour, your personality, as well as your offers, your detail, your prices. This is a media that is packed with potential for driving home reasons to believe and the proof points that will close the deal for you. As Richard talked about right at the start of this presentation, it is that long-term memory encoding that has been validated and proven to drive behaviour. And it's an incredibly important medium to think about if that is your intent. If you've got something important to say, if you want to make people feel something, if you want to get a whole lot of detail out there, if you want to save your reputation, think about newspapers as part of your media strategy. Thank you.